everybody so today as you can tell it's cold it's 45 degrees in Belton Texas right now I just finished dropping off kids at the university and I have kind of come across very well informed clients so clients though are very very smart at least at least the clients that I have I think are really really smart so a lot of the um, kind of new benefits the shiny things that people can uh, or plans will talk about are really to get people to switch right obviously they want more members these new plans and the the main thing I guess to kind of realize when you're talking to beneficiaries about you know who are interested in making changes is that if they make a change to their health plan their entire health plan is changing so it's not just like, oh, you know, we're changing from, you know, like one plan to another plan that has different benefits. It's you're changing from one insurance company to another insurance company. And many of those kind of ways that the insurance company works, the relationship that that insurance company has with doctors, all of those things in the Medicare Advantage space do change they they change uh, it's not a medicare supplement plan where you know if original medicare says it's covered then doesn't matter which supplement plan you have supplement plan is bound by law to pay the claim or pay the responsible or the responsibility that the plan is supposed to pay for it's different right so but my clients seem to have picked up on that and i'm very happy because we have a new plan in the honolulu area that has amazing dental on their street level Medicare Advantage plan, which is quite amazing. I mean, it would entice a few people to change, but I am trying to figure out first if that the base plan is an okay thing to change to and from. Like one of my clients is completely okay because they're really healthy and they just want, they're, they're going to make use of the dental and they're also going to make use of kind of the additional benefits that come with it and they only have one doctor and the doctor accepts the plan because the doctor is part of like the hospital system, right? So the hospital system accepts the plan. It's pretty much going to be a very similar uh, experience for her because of her relatively low level of medical needs. But for someone who has a lot of doctors, someone who has a lot of kind of, I don't want to call it investment, but they're, they're more invested in their uh, medical journey than, than the, the prior client. They're going to want to think about all those relationships that they've built, all the things that they've come to, because the doctors, and this might come to many of you as a surprise, but the doctors do work with insurance companies too. Um, well, I hope that's not a real cat. I hope that's a stuffed animal. Um, the, sorry, lost my train of thought. So, like, I understand this because my wife is in the medical field and she has to do what's called peer-to-peer -peer with different uh, insurance companies. And the different insurance companies have different kind of ways that they cover uh, certain procedures. So there are some insurance companies that are a little bit more relaxed on policy and there's some insurance companies that are very strict on certain policies right so you know that that's not really public information but it does matter that's pretty much what i want to say it does matter so that's something to consider it's an uncontrollable unknown and known so make sure you kind of kind of think about those things okay just like just just don't change somebody because you have a sale in front of you, right? Make sure they understand all the implications of changing plans. For me, and this is why I've changed my entire belief system around HMOs, if somebody is in an HMO and let's say that they are they enjoy, they, well, they're in the hospital system of the HMO and they get all their services from the hospital system within that HMO and they like that HMO but they're not in an HMO yet they're still in the PPO plan for whatever reason that would be in my eyes a prime candidate to talk about HMOs 
because I believe that in HMO, as long as you stay in the network and within their hospital system, it's far easier to get things covered than in a PPO plan where the PPO plan is an outside third party where the third party would have to approve of all the internal things. Whereas I know for HMOs, it is kind of a um, internal matter which is handled externally because the insurance company and the hospital system medical staff to remain somewhat um, independent of each other. You can get things covered a lot easier. Like for me, I have an HMO right now and my visit was showed up as denied, my specialist visit, in which I was I was concerned, but I knew that it would be resolved simply because the HMO that I'm a part of is the hospital system that I went to. So they would figure out how to get it covered because why wouldn't they? It's like an internal kind of accounting issue, right? Because it's a covered service, I had I got the referral. I would have been able to get it done, and even without that, um, not not without the referral, but without the the process, I would eventually get it covered. I mean, I knew that because I'm in this business, but I, I also knew that most likely the company would figure it out because they're all the same thing, right? It's the same same thing, same company. I know you can't make that assumption, you, you shouldn't, but I could because if not, I would fix it and I know how to fix it. So for people who are in an HM or in a PPO and they want to change the guts of their systems for dental, make sure that they fully understand that the guts of their medical insurance will be changing and is it worth it just for dental. Some clients get it, some clients need to be repeated and told over and over again because the last thing you want as an agent is to have your client be like, you made me do this. No, 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 that is, that is terrible. Like, if your client says that, like, oh, you didn't tell me about all these things and you truly did it, that's on you, the agent. And I don't want that to happen, so, you know, do your best to help your clients. I know sometimes, like, the new shiny benefits can be really, really exciting for your clients and for you. Um, but keep in mind that the main the main reason for a Medicare Advantage plan is the medical coverage, okay? It's the Part A and B benefits that you're getting from a private insurance company instead of original Medicare. That is the primary reason for a Medicare Advantage plan. That's it. Drug plan, yeah, that's pretty important as well, but not as important as the hospital and outpatient benefit that you get on a Medicare Advantage plan, right? And how these benefits are administered. You guys have a great rest of the day, AEP, we're on the 19th, I believe. So, uh, yeah, enjoy, try to have a good time, help as many people as possible, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.